Ahsoka, the chick flick of Star Wars. This show has everything. The glow up from hell. Although it only got worse when Ahsoka straight up lied to her about it. Nice haircut. But this show isn't just about fashion sense, no, we've also got feelings. She quit on me. Balls. And there is one golden ball which is particularly beautiful. More feelings. She doesn't want me back. Ahsoka truly was made for the modern audience that doesn't like Star Wars. In fact, it's got so bad that Ahsoka just admits this isn't Star Wars in the credits. A Nightmare on Elm Street was also based on a true story. <laughs> but we start immediately with Sabine alive in hospital, making the last episode pointless. We ended the previous episode with a stab through the chest with a lightsaber, you know, as a cliffhanger. Cliffhangers designed to keep you interested in the show until next week when you see the next episode. They release these episodes back to back. That means that one second she's dead and the next second she's back alive again. With no time in the middle, it doesn't increase tension it makes it look like there's zero consequences. Lightsabers aren't deadly weapons anymore, just in case you thought they were after Reva survived them multiple times. And yes, I know Maul. Maul surviving getting cut in half is also stupid. But I mean, at least he's a better character than this. So far, only personality trait is, I'm an untrustworthy arse, and that doesn't get better in this episode, which is basically her whining for most of it. Sabine. How the f*** am I alive? <laughs> Dude, got stabbed through the chest with a lightsaber. This is crazy. I shouldn't be here. What I do like is how she's dyed her hair in two-tone colors. Specifically, in case she ever goes back to being a Mandalorian, she knows exactly where to cut it. It's less a fashion choice and more hairdressing guidelines. <sighs> it's like painting by numbers, but with scissors. <sighs> this is literally just heavy breathing. Sabine! <sighs> I don't know whether she's a war victim or stalking me down a phone. The droids. They took the map. The locks. The numbers. They follow me everywhere. You don't understand. I, I unlocked it. I really don't know why that's a big deal, to be honest. No, the droids took the map. We don't care about that. But I unlocked it. We wonder the impression they couldn't unlock it themselves. You got the location of that temple from the person who now has that map. It was her people that built the temple that allows you to unlock it in the first place. They're like, oh no! Only I can unlock it because I'm the mighty Sabine. There were two galaxies and then a pathway appeared between them. If you burst into the Spice Girls and start singing Two Become One, I'm out of here. She says I unlocked it, but they took the golden ball away from me before I could work out what planet it was referencing. Did you keep a record of what you found? The droids destroyed it. I mean, not really. One of them went in, shot a few random computers, and went like that on a couple of tablets. If our hard drives can survive burning in a fire, I'm sure yours can survive someone smashing the screen. Well, I could get you the location, but I didn't buy Apple Repair. <laughs> Don't you have any cloud backup services or anything in Star Wars? But Ahsoka asks how many droids were there, she gets told there's two, which immediately prompts her to leave to go back to her house. What follows makes sense if you have Sabine's information, which Ahsoka doesn't actually have. <laughs> so you can explain what happens next objectively, but you can't explain why Ahsoka thought it would. Get some rest. Wait, you need my help. Any help you could provide from bed, love, isn't something we could put on a Disney Plus show. Although give it a few years, they'll probably try. No, you've done enough. You've done enough, you've already stolen my golden ball. Welcome to golden balls. And then lost it to an android after I specifically told you not to take it. If that's what you call help, can you please piss off over there as far as possible? In fact, the map is to another galaxy. That would probably be just about far enough away that you can't destroy my life. Thank you, Sabine. But Ahsoka and her very pointy face leave. And we go over to the dark side now to visit Stonehenge. I'm not joking, they're Stonehenge. Even with all the money, artists, and CGI that Lucasfilm have, they still couldn't create something that looks as impressive as something built 5,000 years ago. It's like you're looking at Stone's pre and post makeup. We get a long scene of them walking into Stonehenge. I think I'm supposed to be impressed. So the music's like, this is a place of darkness. Turns out it's either a map room or a train station. I don't really know what's dark about it. it allows you to travel to another galaxy. I don't know how that's good or evil, to be honest. Walking does go on for quite a while, until eventually he takes his golden balls. And there is one golden ball which is particularly beautiful. Puts it on a pillar. And then, after this really long, drawn-out scene of walking up to a pillar, we get this beauty. Better I believe we have located the reflex point on CETOS. That's it. I'm not even joking. That's the entire scene. We're gonna walk up to an object and go, By the way, tell Steve we found it! You didn't need any of this. You could have just had her answering the phone going, I'll be on my way, mate. Because what do we do immediately after this one? line. That's right, we had to have another long-winded scene of somebody walking away from the stones they just walked up to. 
gripping. Oh, he's looking at the clouds as if he can gaze into another galaxy. Excuse me, sir. We're currently in the search of Dave Filoni's head. We lost it approximately six months ago when he decided to shove it up his own ass. This is somebody desperately trying to be called an artist. Oh, look at that cut. He went into the credits as he gazes off into the distance at literally nothing for no reason. You just don't understand the deeper meta narrative of the piece. But after a scene that definitely should have been cut from the entire series, we're in a field. Don't worry, it's not much. Wait, a second one just appeared. How many pets does she have? Or did she just kidnap one from the field? And if she did, kidnap one of these cats from the field and then keep it in her tower at the top. That adds a whole new angle to what we're seeing here. These aren't little cats interested in a plane flying overhead. These are like SAS agents coming out of cover, looking at a tower they're about to attack to free their friend. Pretty sure I've seen that exact thing in an advert for the British Army. Use it. Look, when you're watching Ahsoka, you have to go up with your own entertainment, and that means creating your own stories. But Ahsoka is back at Sabine's house, and she sees Sabine's pet, which definitely isn't much, and it's growling on the inside as if to warn her there's danger in there. This is probably the most unrealistic part of the show. Everyone knows cats wouldn't give a crap if there was danger in there. They'd just let you walk in and find it funny. What you needed for loyalty is a dog. A cat would be happy for you to die just so it could eat you afterwards. Either way, Ahsoka goes in and looks around. She finds the hologram of the worst actor in the show. Luckily, he didn't start talking, so we can all be thankful for that. But as she's distracted and not paying attention, the cat spots the droid descending from the roof and seems to be angry that he's about to steal his food from him. Well, that droid was a lot less dangerous than he was yesterday, wasn't he? And now's the bit that doesn't really make any sense, because we get this from him. I was hoping you were still here. Yeah, but why? <laughs> the reasons why this doesn't make any sense are everywhere. Okay, first, why is the droid here in the first place? Well, as you can see, the droid has one foot missing because Sabine blew it off yesterday when she shot it. Presumably, he couldn't escape, so he thought hiding in there and killing anyone who came searching for evidence would be the best part of his mission. So we have why he's staying in the room, and Sabine could even work this out logically by going, well, I did blow one of their feet off, maybe he's still there. The issue is, Ahsoka knew none of this. And so why? I was hoping you were still here. Would you ever hope that he was still here? That's like being a policeman and just standing by a murder scene hoping the guy comes back. Hold on, sir. Let me check under the fridge just in case he's never left. This is why I said the writer may have trouble with the abstract, because he seems to think that all of his characters have access to all the information that he does. He's not able to pass out that different characters have different perspectives and different knowledge bases in his universe. <laughs> if one knows it, everybody does. And the other problem is that droid had a gun yesterday. It was on his back. That's how he lost the foot in the first place. He could have just stayed up at the rafters and shot her in the arse. Mind you, he could have also shot Sabine in the back of the head yesterday as well, and he didn't do that either. So the only explanation I can come up for him not doing either of these things is that this is an assassin droid who doesn't actually want to shoot people. Don't think about it too hard. Just turn your brain off. It'll be fine. Either way, now Ahsoka has been on her magical collect mission, she brings back the head to Sabine. And the next stage of the MMO fetch quest can begin. Sabine thinks that she can hack the head and get the information of where the droid came from. But that doesn't make any sense. This is an assassin droid sent on assassination missions. Being able to access his memory banks and track down who hired him seems like it'd be a bit of a design flaw, personally. No one thought about that, though, in the universe. Like me, this kind of droid is incredibly resilient. Oh, does he have nonsensical plot armor as well? At this point, you've got a character bragging about how bad the writing is in their own show. Just sicken me to my stomach. You're no Star Wars fan in my mind. Well, if it's as terribly written as I am, then it it'll be fine. And it will be, because this is a chick flick with no consequences. You can't have a character brag, well, if I don't have to suffer the consequences for my actions, nobody else should. You do not get to choose. It's my show. She's even treating it as if it's a virtue. This kind of droid is incredibly resilient. It's not a talent to be an awful character. It really isn't. <laughs> They're looking at each other as if, oh, she's so amazing because our writers are awful. She's got skin which naturally reflects lightsaber plasma. It didn't exist in Star Wars until five seconds ago, but it does now. I mean, this is only based on Star Wars after all. Take off an arm or leg and it just keeps coming. What's that got to do with accessing the memory banks of its creators, love? You can take off a human's arm and they can keep coming at you. It's just a function of having multiple limbs. That means they have several built-in backup systems. No, that means they've got limbs. It means if you cut 
cut off a left arm, they've still got a right arm and so can use that. How bad are these droids where you cut off one arm and they just stop? Its memory core stays partially active even after termination. What do those two things have to do with each other? Even if you have backup systems in case one system is damaged so you can use the other one to make you a bit more survivable, why would that still work after termination when the entire point would be that you want it to be terminated so that you can't be tracked via its memory banks? Your failed assassination victim not finding out who hired the assassin, generally a good idea. And if you get the power levels right... What the power levels have to do anything? I thought you were hacking it. You can recover the droid's memory. I tell ya, I have listened to a lot of technical trash explanations in many shows. Everything from Star Trek to The Flash CW, where they would just make up some nonsense in order to travel to a different dimension. But you can't simultaneously use something very easy to understand and try and BS people over it. Very clever. No, it isn't. It's very stupid. Way to set feminism back a few decades. You made it so simple I could understand it and it doesn't physically make sense for a design. Maybe it's just because it's robot. You should just said magic. Just say magic. Just say it's got the force inside it. What if you get the power levels wrong? The head will explode. I take back everything I said. Go ahead, love. This could be interesting. Perhaps we should perform this operation somewhere else. I say go for it. I'm with the general. Because you're a hologram. Even if she wasn't, I'd still be with the general. If all of you have to explode in order to try this, then that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. There's no time. Wait, did you just break the fourth wall? She just broke the fourth wall. Why? Although it does seem like she's specifically agreeing with me. We're all gonna die. I say we do it. That's because you're not in danger. Well... There's no time to relocate. What do you mean? Yesterday, you found out that she was having a lightsaber fight on the edge of town and you got there before the end of the fight. It'd only take you two minutes to get back to her house and you could do it there. You can't be teleporting all over the universe and then suddenly go, we don't have the time for this. So what follows is a rather bizarre hacking scene where she just sticks a pin in it and then starts to play a little puzzle game. I'm not joking, this show doesn't just have the quests of an MMO, it has the mini games built into it as well. Because she picks up this pad to hack it and it's like she's trying to play a game of wood <laughs> you know, she's putting in the numbers or the letters. It's like, well, green's in the right place, but red, no, that one doesn't exist. And while it's happening, we've got this, it's meant to be a thermometer, but it looks more like a battery charge indicator. And when it reaches maximum, it's just going to blow up. The circuit temperature is rising. I love how you've got a thermometer that just starts at zero and ends at explosion. <laughs> did you just have that lying around or did you calibrate it specifically to this unit? Or do all droids just have a set explosion temperature? So you could just have one mass calibrated for all units. Oh, you are crap at Wordle, love. You've only guessed the first letter in each one. You haven't even got any yellows to tell you you've guessed the right letter in the wrong place. Although maybe it is a bit more complicated when underneath, she seems to be playing a game of Battleship at the same time. It's encrypted. I need a minute. I wonder how many times it's encrypted has just meant I'm terrible at Wordle. I'm doing one of those encrypted Wordles. It's not that I've just never heard of the word. That couldn't be it. Well, the temperature keeps going up. Start sparking. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that'll do great for its memory banks. It's overheating. Switch it off. Oh, calm down, David. It's not overheating that much. We're only 40% to explosion, mate. I think we've got a bit of time yet. Can you imagine doing a Windows update on himself? He'll just pull the plug before it's finished and die. What's a bean? Absolutely crap at guessing four-letter words. Still has only guessed the same letter. 80% to explosion now. We're all grateful that we had one of these perfectly calibrated for us. But then, out of nowhere, we are out of time. She starts to guess the letters backwards. <laughs> We hit 100% explosion, but you know what a Windows update is like. It hits 100% and then just waits around doing nothing for half an hour. So he just unplugs it, stops the explosion immediately. I'm really not sure why he was so concerned when all he had to do was pull a wire out. It's oddly bomb defuse lizard. But it's okay because she got the answer anyway. What is it? This droid came here from Corellia. I don't know why you couldn't just say that first and you had to wait around staring at it for half an hour. When you know that that's the only information she's got, the whole dramatic pause really doesn't make much sense, does it? Corellia. <laughs> like, what? What? We realise pausing for dramatic effect only really works when you've got something dramatic to say at the end of it. Morgan Elspeth had factories on Corellia. Oh, well, it must be her then, right? Couldn't be anybody else on a planet. Oh, this droid came from an entire planet. I know Steve. Steve's on that planet. So are two trillion other people. Yeah, but you know, you know what Steve's like. Steve's, Steve's got his fingers and everything. <laughs>
I really hate how we're treating entire planets like small towns. It worked in westerns where you'd go to a town and it'd have like one pub, a few houses, and one sheriff. It doesn't work when you're talking about a planet. Her imperial operation should have been dismantled after the rebellion. Anyone check on that? Love, if you want us to check every single person on every single planet in the entire universe, it's gonna take a while. Do you know how many shipyards there would be in a galaxy? I'll meet you there. Let's get going. Are you taking the piss? You got stabbed with a lightsaber yesterday. We're like, oh yeah, let's go and fight people. No, you need to recover. I'm fine. You shouldn't be. You don't even have the decency in this show to pretend you're ill. <laughs> How are we ever supposed to take a lightsaber fight seriously when you got to being going, I'm fine, I'm resistant to him. Do you not realize I've got the only thing in the universe that can stop a lightsaber? Yes, ovaries. Hey, you did good. What? Are you clinically insane? She stole the universe's most important golden ball. And that's the one that contains 75,000 pounds. Took it to a place without orders so it could get stolen by the evil empire. Got stabbed with a lightsaber because she was terrible in combat and then struggled to guess a four letter wordle. And Oh, you're amazing! Tell that to her. Why? Is she gonna have to lie to two people now? Just accept she was trying to save your feelings so you wouldn't top yourself and move on. We don't have to all live in your own delusional fantasy land, love. I do. Why? If you are, then you shouldn't be a general because that means you'd have to actually live in reality for once. She's not the one who needs to hear it right now. Nobody needs to hear that. No, what she needs to hear is you're being court-martialed for risking the fate of the universe. I haven't seen her in years and the first thing I do goes sideways. Oh, oh, we're gonna talk about feelings. The first thing you do goes sideways because you went specifically against orders and are terrible at everything you do and now have people reinforcing your terrible behavior telling you you're great. If you start talking about how oppressed you are, I'm out. You're both difficult. That's that's one word for it. I'd prefer to use the words insufferable myself, but here we are. I always thought that made it work. Until it didn't. You thought two people being demented cows made it work, right? Now may be a great time to introduce body type ones to stoicism. You know, we're supposed to be in the army and so we're professional and just make it work. Uh, interpersonal relationships are entirely pointless and- <laughs> Still, you need to help each other. Why would she ever help Sabine when the first thing Sabine did is steal from her? You heard her, she doesn't want my help. Based economy? <laughs> Your help was stealing from her and then losing it, mate. Now get some rest. You're gonna need it. Well, after that conversation, I think she should get some rest because I'm gonna need it. <laughs> Can you just stay unconscious for a while? I don't want to hear from you. I can't stand your emotional whining, quite frankly. Your high school whining about how you can't get on with Sharon isn't needed in this show. Thank you very much. Oh, you gave me a pep talk that I don't deserve rather than putting me in handcuffs and sending me to prison for the rest of my life. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Back at Stonehenge now with a scene that hopefully is more useful than the last one. And I say hopefully, I know what this scene is. It's not really. Show me what you found. Well, we found this rock. <laughs> No, seriously, it's like, we found this rock just here in the middle of a circle of other rocks. But he says, Stonehenge wasn't built by the Jedi. Who built it? Well, it was a long ancient race from another galaxy. If this turns out to be the first people from Fringe, oh, I'm not going to be pleased. It turns out that Ahsoka built it. She really is the key to everything. Ancient people from a distant galaxy. Ahsoka. <laughs> Would you like to see it? What are you gonna do if he says no? Send him back in the ship. You only came here to activate the device in the first place. But she starts waving her hand over the golden ball, presumably to work out whether it's got two grand in it or 25. Amanda goes and spoils everything by adding four of her deadly killer balls. <laughs> And she activates a green gas-powered Bunsen burner. I tell you, these ancients had high tech. And she does all this at this specific location, simply to replicate what Sabine did in her own home by turning it a bit. All I'm saying is I think she may have been a bit overcomplicated with the process. She's having to use the force to activate all this stuff with a special Stonehenge contraption. You could have just turned it. This is our galaxy. That is our galaxy on drugs. <laughs> yes, that's right. Despite Sabine doing all of this in her own home, when you bring it to this special location that was built by an ancient species from a different galaxy, what you get is just a larger version of it. It turns out Stonehenge is basically an IMAX screening. I'm glad this ancient species was so forward planning. Is it possible to watch John Wick 4 on that? I'd love to know. <laughs> but she starts describing how this has told us where Thrawn is, he's been exiled, and it shows the location of the path to Peridia, which all the Jedi younglings used to talk about. Some children of the Jedi Temple call it that. It comes from old stories. Fairy tales. Well, if these are Disney fairy tales, I can understand why you're confused. As when Disney get hold of them, they just change them beyond recognition into something else. I can't believe this one used to actually exist. <laughs> yes, that galaxy existed 85 years ago, and so it's really outdated, and we should just move on and forget it. It's only a pillar, love. Calm down. That's the second woman in two episodes to get far too much enjoyment from groping a pillar. 
At this point, it just feels like you should get a room. Tron calls to me across time and space. I thought it was a train station, not a TARDIS. You can't say this is a map to another galaxy and then suddenly jump into, we're communicating across space and time. All you're doing is nip in the corner shop, just in another galaxy. You speak of dreams, vague and fractured hopes. Is that your way of calling her a nutter? You speak of dreams, delusions. I think you're clinically insane, love. The threads of fate do not lie. I don't know. Have you ever seen Beast Wars? That's a show for kids and it handled the concept of fate far better than you're doing right now. But she starts to grab the suspiciously ball-shaped galaxy. <laughs> 16 golden balls out there. Four of them are killers. Before deactivating the map. And he looks remarkably disappointed. The Eye of Sion is on its way here. When you start talking about the Eye of Sauron, I think you're in the wrong show. But the Eye of Sion is an intergalactic ship, I'm assuming, unless it's just going to create a portal between the two things. And there's a strange man who's got to do a mission. Marok will complete his task. Yes, Malrock or Marok. I have no idea and I can't be bothered to look. All in all, there was probably better displays of witchcraft in the actual Stonehenge, to be honest. What happens when you find Thrawn? The end of the series? I don't know. He renames Ahsoka to X. Could you even find him if he's got to communicate with you across time? I was going to say Thrawn can time travel now as well. For some, war. For others, death. A new beginning. Won't the ones who have a new beginning also get involved in the war? Even if you're on Thrawn's side and are the ones declaring war, you're still involved in war. He's basically gone, was for some, war. For others, war. <laughs> and for us, war. <laughs> Power. As we will conquer by a war. But he tells her to go to Corellia and assist Malrock with the final transport. As I've watched this episode, I can't actually remember her doing that. <laughs> At no point does she help. So I'm not sure what the point of this is. Have I forgotten some important information? We'll find out together. On Corellia now, and Ahsoka's arrived. The music is desperate to make this scene feel impressive. <laughs> Didn't really work though, did it? The music's desperately trying to hype it up, and she's like, well, um, a bit more throttle. <laughs> But as she lands and gets off the ship, the general's already there. And so is... So Katano, this is Min Weaver, regional supervisor. Seen it before. This dude was in Colony on Netflix, and do you want to know who he played? A human collaborator with an alien invasion. And what was his job? Min Weaver, regional supervisor. It's the same job! Colony literally had him as a regional supervisor. I don't know whether it's a coincidence or they're actually taking the piss. Especially when in Colony you would expect a human to support the humans, but he's actually swapped sides and he's now working for the aliens, the evil aliens aliens. And in this, we're supposed to think he's on our side, but he's a regional supervisor. I would never gonna see that twist coming. The twist got spoiled for me from a different TV show. I'm just thinking last time I saw him, he was evil. I wonder if he is in this. Comes to a point where you're typecast as an actor just because everyone thinks you've got the face of a massive twat. They convince him to let them look around at the operations, both trying to find out where the assassin droids came from, but also if any of her tech is going to nefarious purposes. We go through the shipyard and we get that Morgan used to provide materials for Star Destroyer engines. Now we're we'll taking them apart using the cores to power the new ships in the defense fleet. Why? Why not just use the engines that you've already got? It'd be way more efficient. I don't even know why you dismantle the old fleet just to build a new fleet that's smaller. Because at this point, all they're going to do is build a worse fleet than their enemies had. <laughs> it's not a good idea. But Ahsoka asks, do you employ any of the former staff of Morgan? Of course, there's no other way to remain operational. Ah, yes, I always employ my enemies. <laughs> it's like if you wanted to save the Witcher TV series and so you just got rid of the person in charge and then kept everybody else in the company together. Oh, I'm sure new showrunner would fix that mess. I'm sure they would. Definitely wouldn't need anyone else changing. Don't you worry about their loyalty? I worry about his loyalty. Have you seen Colony, love? This episode could have been 10 minutes shorter if you had a Netflix subscription. <laughs> but he says no, the average worker doesn't care about galactic policies. They're loyal to something else. They have loyalty so long as they're paid. Like the actors of this show, really. <laughs> Many people used to have loyalty to Star Wars and then Disney bought it. And now, now we just turn up for the money. <laughs> Not the prestige job it once was. And you? He's definitely in it for the money. I'm a businessman, Jen. In every role I do, in every TV show, I'm always evil. Now won't be any exception. My loyalty is to my investors. Yeah, but who are your investors? That's the problem with everything he said. He just went, well, they're loyal to money. It's like, okay, who's paying you then? <laughs> because sure, we are. Is anybody else? At no point did she go, who are your investors? And so, as we move through the volume, we get a conversation which basically proves neither of them have watched the show. We're going to take everything that happened up to this point and just rewrite history in front of us. Ought to be interesting. Looks like connecting with some Sabine paid off. So far, the only thing Sabine has contributed is to be an assassination target. Until she lost.
lost the map? Yeah, that's all she contributed. She lost the map, but it allowed Ahsoka to find a droid that led them here. Sabine has done nothing. <laughs> well, I suppose she did hack into the droid afterwards. After she almost blew it up. At least she unlocked it. Do you mean at least she unlocked it? She unlocked it, but didn't get any of the information out of it, so what's the point? All she essentially did is unlock it for the evil people. If you unlock a map, but can't remember the map, that's of no use to you, love. She got us here. No, she didn't. She just got attacked, and then Ahsoka got you here. It's like, well, she hacked it from a hospital bed. That's what I want from the heroes of my stories, just to spend an entire episode in bed. I was wondering if you would consider bringing her back on as your apprentice. Literally nothing has happened to change the situation from whatever caused them to split up in the first place. But we've got a new TV series, and that's enough to make them do it anyway for no reason. But Ahsoka doesn't want to, and so the general has to convince her using an incredibly powerful argument. I think she could use some structure. As long as you're describing it like a five-year-old, I guess that's all the reason I need. I'm not sure structure is the reason to become a Jedi apprentice. You could tell her to get in the kitchen, it still provides structure. A lot of things provide structure. She's not ready. What makes someone ready? You just know. Oh, feelings! This entire show is about feelings! How do you know if you're ready to become a Jedi apprentice? Female intuition, mate. All oh, right, right. Nothing logical or rational. You just feel it in your water, I guess. Do you have a burning sensation when you pee? You're probably a Jedi. But she just accepts it as if, oh, that's a perfectly good explanation. Yes. You just know. In brackets, couldn't think of an explanation, so just said feelings. Didn't want to put in more effort, as later in the script, she joins anyway. We're going to not be bothered to put in the work, and then claim it's a virtue. So then we get the lightsaber wound. As you can see, lightsabers, not dangerous. I've had bigger scars than that from trying to make a cup of tea. And of course, I as you know, a lightsaber only damages the skin. All the organs and stuff inside, that's never gonna be affected. Don't worry about it. No, no, we healed up the outer skin. D that's enough. Don't worry about the superheated plasma entering your bodily organs. Why on earth is that your medical droid? He looks like he's about to give you enhanced interrogation. I heard your repairs were complete. Yeah, either that or she's about to be waterboarded. Ah, I see you still have your lightsaber. But what we get next from Sabine is another scene about feelings. I have never been tricked into watching a chick flick via a lightsaber before, but there is a first time for everything. But the droid starts to talk about her lightsaber, or Ezra's lightsaber. Ezra Miller gets in so many fights, he probably does need a lightsaber by this point. Your lightsaber. For all the good it did me. That's true, you are crap at it. All those random spins and my favorite part where you got attacked by a cloak. Oh no, cloth! It was very dramatic. Have you kept up with your training? You do realize she's in hospital, right? Do you think she kept up with the training? Who's she training with? Her cat? Obviously not. Well, at least she's honest. I was trash before and I'm worse now. I can't train if Ahsoka doesn't want to teach me. I don't know, that's never stopped any other body type ones in Hollywood. Was it Shang-Chi's sister who just watched some people fighting and then trained herself and became better than them? This is 2023 and you've got bad writers. I believe in you. That is an excuse. So does he. And a poor one. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of poor excuses in this series, mate. I'd just strap in and get used to it. She quit on me. I don't blame her. You've proven yourself to be nothing but an inconsiderate, arrogant ass at this point in the show. I'd have left you as well. The past is the past. Move forward. Do you remember when Thanos wiped out half the universe? Well, you know, the past is the past. Just move on. Forget about it. It'll be fine. If you could have unlocked the map yourself, would Ahsoka have come here? No. Because then she would have had the map, unlocked the map, the villains wouldn't have it now. In fact, if she could have unlocked it herself, everything would have been better. You're not just useless, you're an active drain on everybody. Irrelevant. It, it's more than relevant, mate. It's very relevant. Thank you. And now you've realized that, can you kindly piss off and leave everyone else to save the universe, please? Was I part of the plan? So you know when I was told to leave the map in the ship and I deliberately stole it and then almost died and, and utterly ruined everything that you wanted to do? Yeah, you know that bit. Was that part of the plan? Were you planning on failing? I, I really... Why is the only question. She doesn't want me back. Why would anyone want you back? I wouldn't want you in the first place. The only thing you've done so far in this entire show is make everybody lives worse for your presence within it. At this point, our only hope is there is no glass in that window and he pushes you off. She wasn't even thinking about me. Forgot how annoying you are. What? What? I forgot you said that line. That came out of nowhere. Can you just imagine playing the character of Sabine and going, I didn't know you were so annoying. Talk about the pot and salt in the kettle. I never had the talent, the abilities. At least we're finally getting down to the truth here, love. Realize how useless you are and then kindly piss off. Not like Ezra. The Mad Goose Wizard. We keep talking about Ezra Miller. Even in his own superhero show, the only talent he had was to run really quickly. All I'm saying is you're not that great a superhero if you can be replaced by Limford Christie. He literally put a baby in a microwave. That much 
much is true. Based economy. This really is shaping up to be one of the scenes, though, where the other guy just goes and pushes you over. Can we set this on the side of a cliff? I'd enjoy it a lot more. I've known many Padawans over the centuries. Your aptitude for the Force would fall short of them all. <laughs> This is what's supposed to convince her to come back. This is what does convince her to come back. You're trash, love, and useless and everything. The Star Wars fan base really seems to be the most kind of toxic. If that's what it takes to get you to try and save the world, you should have sent me in there. I'd have had a lot more fun doing it. <laughs> I won't waste any more of her time. I really wish that was true, but I've seen the ending of this episode. But he says the only time you're wasting is your own. Yes, and everybody else that she ever meets. But he offers her a lightsaber. And she takes it in a symbolic gesture. I'm coming back. And the music's really trying to make it emotional. the emotional weight of an amputation surgery. Back with the guy who's definitely not evil, by the way, and we're in the control center. Just ignore everyone acting suspicious, I'm sure they're not. This is where they control everything, dismantle everything, and find buyers for all of the parts. Profits generated from a single star destroyer are enough to fund a variety of New Republic reconstruction programs. Yeah, but they really shouldn't, though, shouldn't they? Selling a ship is never gonna get you back what it costs to build it, and so if you sell a ship and then build another ship with it, you're just gonna end up with a weaker, lower quality, worse ship. Should have just kept them as they were. He says their board and investors get all the first look at the gear. Nobody once even considers asking, who are your investors? And the general spots this massive engine. The New Republic Defense Fleet isn't building anything that big. Shouldn't you be? You're literally dismantling these massive ships and you're not building anything comparable. What is the point? The New Republic sounds like it's run by idiots. What class of starship are they for? Well, by the sounds of it, one that would destroy any of your ships. No wonder you worried. But the guy starts to look up in his records where it's going and it turns out they're classified. I'm a general. Nothing's classified to me. Well, these are. So at this point, the car should be turning in her head. If I have top level clearance within the New Republic and yet I can't unlock these records and you won't let me read them, they're clearly not classified by the New Republic. You're a general. You would have thought you could put two and two together, but no. So instead we get a really long drawn out scene where it's like, I can't unlock them. You should unlock them. I can't unlock them. Come on droid, let's see if we can unlock them. So the droid comes over to help and they start asking about HK droids. Have you seen any? He says no, but the droid can't keep its mouth shut. It's like if you're lying to someone, but you've got a little kid in the room who doesn't know to keep their mouth Shut. So the bot says, I saw one the other day, but I couldn't do anything about it because it had higher clearance than I did. Red flag number two. Why do assassin droids have clearance at this shipyard? Think they'd be on their guard? They're not on their guard. They might be the slowest two people in the universe. I could not object. Where is this droid now? Why aren't you more concerned that they have security clearance at the facility that you're at? On that transport? Yeah, that would be the big engine. So they try to stop the engine leaving, but it's already been cleared to leave, and so for some reason they can't? I don't understand either. Stop it leaving. We can't. We've already said it can. Okay, okay. Well, just tell it it can't then? It's a very complex plot, as you can see. I can't do that, General. They've been cleared for departure. Just unclear it for departure then? It's still on the ground. If you go, if you leave, we'll shoot you down. They'll probably stop. But then this guy starts to get really suspicious, glancing over at his partner and reaching for his hip. Now you have to remember, there is a Jedi in the room, as well as a General. Both of which you would expect to be aware of their surroundings. Especially when you've been told that assassin droids have clearance for this facility. But while she's just screaming at somebody, this guy proves to be admittedly even thicker than they are, which is surprising. For the Empire! <laughs> now, he may have made a tactical error by yelling, FOR THE EMPIRE! before he did his surprise attack, you know. I'm sure you've all seen a cat hunting out into the wild, and as it sneaks up on the birds or the fish, it always goes, Me! just before it attacks, right? You should always alert your prey before you try and hunt it. That's just polite. The worst thing is, she does notice that he's moving and has moved his hands to his hip, but I don't think she attacks until after he finishes the line. For the Empire! For the Empire! Bang! So if he kept his gob shot and just fired immediately, the general would have been dead. And if we were going to kill the general, why didn't we just shoot her in the first place? Or if you didn't want her dead, why shoot her at all? Because she's not as if she can stop the ship anyway. Either way, the worst assassin in the world gets defeated, and then blaster shots start going off everywhere. Even if it's difficult to understand why. Because this guy attacks, but that blaster bolt, a random guy over here by a desk, all he's doing is standing there and a laser flies past his face. Well, where could that have come from? Oh right, the general started shooting at him. For no reason. You get attacked by a guy on your right, and your first instinct is to pull your gun and shoot a guy across the other side of the room, you murderous little cow. In fact, the only defense she has is that he did look a little bit suspicious before, but he's not threatening anyone here until a laser gets fired past his face, and then he does pull out a gun. But at that point, it's just self-defense. She'd already been shooting at him. Personally, I'm on his side. Ahsoka then also gets a bit of the bloodlust, and she takes down the woman who wouldn't stop the original ship, and although, yes, she's firing at her at this point, 
You've also just randomly attacked one of my friends and pulled a lightsaber on me. I'd be shooting you as well. And Ahsoka, just to round it all out, uses the force on the next person who's also acting in self-defense because you're murdering their friends. Ataya, one guy does a surprise attack and you decide to murder everybody in the room. No wonder you couldn't be a Jedi. This show's like, oh, there is no good or bad guys. I don't know. I think we found the evil couple. I think the only reason he's alive is because they didn't notice him standing behind the droid. One of the benefits of being four foot, I suppose. So Ahsoka dives out the window, runs after the ship, but can't stop it, and for some reason, the ship left behind two people. <laughs> this also doesn't make any sense. If those two people just got on the ship, there's still no way to have stopped the ship, and they want to go to where that ship's going anyway, so why didn't you just hop in? Instead, well, we're gonna have a fight. Well, the general hops into her ship and goes to track down the engine. Now, the guy has an interesting opening move. <laughs> What was the point of that? If you're just gonna get rid of the cloak at the first opportunity, why are we wearing it in the first place? You're in armor, it's hardly gonna provide you with any warmth. And I mean, spinning your cloak into Sabine's face defeated her, why not try that on Ahsoka as well? Either way, the HK droid goes after Ahsoka first and she decides to do a spinny attack, which prompts the droid to, for some reason, decide to just run away from the fight? I don't know. If he just turned around and hit her in the back, she'd be dead now. But once again, these lightsaber fights, you don't wanna pay too much attention to it. But with that in mind, there are a few things that just make you go, what are you doing? For, for instance, Ahsoka spins and she kicks a droid's one leg, which knocks him to the ground. I just expect assassin droids to be able to counter their center of balance, to be honest, but here we are. The funny thing is, he then immediately tries the exact same move on her. And she's like, oh no, I'm too good for you. Can't get me with my own trick. Now, I did find it interesting in this bit, just the strength difference between the two of them, because she's defending and he's pushing, but... He's clearly winning that duel. She gets out of it with a force push, and then we get one of the most ridiculous scenes of the entire episode. I think this is meant to be a high adrenaline chase. Uh, it isn't. She's like, oh, you need to stand down and return to port. Obviously it doesn't. It turns its guns on her. She doesn't have any guns. She's also flying directly behind it, exactly where the guns can fire. Not the smartest. Because as we find out later, she does have the speed to catch up to it whenever she wants. But it pulls out its cannons, and then we get this mess. <laughs> Hit it. You're not even very far, you're barely moving, and the lasers explode next to you for some reason. Even I could hit you. And yet what follows is just this for a very long time, where it keeps shooting at her and misses all the time. Never even gets hit once. They're moving so slowly, and the droid is the only thing in this series more annoying than Sabine. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. You're a droid on the outside of a ship. Oh, I'm getting shot at. You're the droid of a general. What were you expecting? Back with Ahsoka, still fighting the pair of them. And they're overpowering her, trying to push her off. Until... Yeah, she must have had enough XP to level up and use her sudden boost of power to defeat them. Because she kits the guy away, moves on to the droid now, and stabs him through the chest. As we all know, getting stabbed through the chest with a lightsaber, not lethal. He'll be fine. But that's not my problem. My problem is this. What is that? Lightsabers go through metal. So if you have a lightsaber and stab it through metal and then walk forwards, your lightsaber just goes through him more. It doesn't push him. You can't decide when it goes through metal or whether it just pushes the metal. But that's exactly what happened here. Which is a very cool way to dispose of the droid, I admit. Although then, we get the masterpiece of the scene. This was clearly meant to be impressive. He's just lost his partner, now it's 1v1, and I need to intimidate you. You know, I'm gonna intimidate you, Ahsoka. I mean, it reeks of overcompensating to me. It was meant to be really cool. Well, it's just me and you, Ahsoka. Zoom. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's because you can't see his face and he's just perfectly still. You couldn't have been less intimidating if you tried. Back up in space now and the ship is still shooting at the other ship and missing every single shot. This goes on forever. <laughs> The sheer amount of lasers they're getting fired and not a single one hits is farcical. And no point does she attempt to overtake it or move into an area where its guns don't cover. No, we're just gonna stay in the line of fire. <laughs> Meanwhile, the droid starts to look for an air tag. And the droid's voice is horrible. It's just a guy speaking English and they've just put a tone over the top of it. What the fuck? I mean, come on! But where that really shows is later on when he's actually searching for the device and can't find it. First up though, back with the fight and we get some weird moves like this. He attack once on the left, she defeats it, but then he gets the left one and he will attack up to a point and hold it until she beats him back. 
I'm gonna attack you. Oh, you, you, you missed your timing there, love. Oh no, she's all right. She's not me back now. We also have this where all he has to do is swing around to the left. He'd beat her. All of her defenses are wide open. He could easily beat her at this point. He's not gonna do that either. If he swung around the other side of the blade into her side, she wouldn't be able to defeat it. There's so many openings that she has that he doesn't go for. It's insane. Now both of her lightsabers are on one side of his blade. He could just swing it around, get her in the head. No, I'm not going to do that. This guy has two ends to his lightsaber and he just doesn't use them. And as you're watching it through, yeah, it moves so fast that you don't really notice it. Or if you do, you'd be like, wait, was that? And then it goes on to the next thing. And for a TV series, I don't think it's the end of the world. It's just, it's what leads them to just be meh. And then there's this. <laughs> What was that? I've got you now. You're all mine. Both your lightsabers are up on either side. Easy win. Oh, just don't have the reach to reach you. <laughs> lightsabers are up in the air. She's entirely open. And all he had to do was reach forward. And he's like, no, I'm just going to attack two inches in front of my face. If only you were closer, you'd be dead. <laughs> so the droid is searching through his compartment of stuff. And he just keeps throwing it out. Why are you collecting this stuff if none of it's useful? And you can just throw it out. Oh, oh, oh. He's clearly going, no. No, no. Oh, yes, you did. If we're gonna have droids not speak a language and just beep, don't make the beeps the language. But he looks under the backup battery and finds the tracker. She then decides to accelerate. If you can catch up to it, love, why didn't you do that at any of the other previous times? Because it's still shooting at you. I don't know if you've noticed. Although when it's aiming like a stormtrooper, does anyone really care? Ahsoka then pushes the guy back. He gets a beep on his gauntlet. It's time to go. And he throws his double-ended lightsaber straight at her. Of course, first he's got to do something else. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to make it spin first. You do realize when you throw it, you can spin it yourself. You didn't have to do this stupid thing. She backflips over the top of it and he runs off to a ship, which I can't believe they did this. The guns on the ship aren't zeroed correctly. And so they shoot either side of him. Now he seems to realize this. So he runs through them. The issue is, if he can run through them, then so can Ahsoka because she's just following him. So they both just run through the lasers, knowing they're not going to be hit. So what was the point of firing in the first place? Meanwhile, he jumps on. Ahsoka's too late and can't reach him just before. She dodges the lightsaber. Up in space now with the tracking device. And I don't know what they thought they were doing with this, but they did it anyway. We finally realized we can accelerate, catch up to the ship, bin over the top of it, upside down to get the droid. Ooh to throw it onto the other ship. Why? This is meant to be a high-tech civilization that has access to hyperspace. You don't even have tracking sensors that you can fire out of your ship. You've got to get a guy next to you to lob it manually. At this point, I'm surprised you didn't climb out the pilot seat and just hold onto the side of the ship as it went into hyperspace yourself. Good work, chap. That's one word for it. I did forget about one thing as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a robot flexing. Show us your guns, mate. Oh, sorry, you don't have any guns on your ship. I've got two guns here. Oh, promise you though, it's not merch. It's not merch. They wouldn't do something that cringy with merch, I'm sure. Not if they want to sell any. So Ahsoka finds out that they were successful in their tracking device. We go back to the most annoying person in the universe, who's also meeting her merch. She lays out her armor on the table in a sort of the leg bone is connected to the hip bone kind of way. And then makes a decision. There's no way my hair's gonna fit in that helmet. And so, in what seems like almost ritualistic, even though she's just cutting her hair, pulls out a knife, pulls her hair back. And I can only assume uses the colouring itself to determine where she needs to make the slash. All I'm saying is if cutting your hair's that easy, a lot of people are getting ripped off. She did one slash with a knife and she's like, my hair's done, better leave. <laughs> the guy from Colony gets arrested and Ahsoka looks down on him because he's only loyal to money. It's not loyalty, it's greed. You should know, you work for Disney. And as Ahsoka returns to her ship, she gets a message from Colonel Sanders. Sabine, I couldn't even remember her name, but Colonel Sanders will do. Now she's ruined her hair. I can only assume long hair was too feminine and so Disney's like, you've got to get rid of that as soon as possible. We can't have that in this show. And so as he stands there, turns out somebody's drawn a cartoon on a wall. Oh, how very Star Wars of you. Really just blends in with the rest of the structure to allow a child to graffiti a cartoon on the wall. You could have at least done this in like a crash or something. There is no way you did that with one slash of a knife, love. I really don't think it would have broken the Star Wars canon if you'd just gone, they have invented scissors. But Ahsoka turns up and she has an important message for her. Nice haircut. With stimulating conversation skills like that, who wouldn't want to be your apprentice? 
It's more me. What if girls' nights out are only that way because nobody else can stand the conversation? But as they've tracked down the engine, they go after it, only for us to jump over to where it is and find out they're building a massive iris. Soon the Eye of Sion will be complete. Yeah, the Eye of Sion will be complete. And then we will go to another universe, galaxy. But she asks him what he sees in the Force about Ahsoka, to which he only replies, Her presence in the Force is elusive, yet her determination, she's coming. Look, I knew you could spy on people through the Force, mate, but I think that's a bit personal. There are websites for that kind of thing. We didn't need that much detail. Nothing can prevent our journey. Except Ahsoka Tenno blowing up your Eye of Sauron, but there you go. Kill her. It'll be a shame. There's so few Jedi left. Don't worry, Disney can always find more. Oh, look, I found someone else who survived Order 66. You'll be fine, I'm sure. And that was episode two. It was less boring than episode one, but it was just as annoying more annoying. So much talking about Sabine's feelings, and nobody cares about her feelings, because she's the most annoying character in the show. And we just continued with the MMO fetch quest, very similar to Mandalorian. The storytelling in this is basically, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and just feel yourself entering a coma, and then there's a lightsaber fight, and then it's back to, and then, and then. The space battle was particle in every way. You get the feeling she could have stayed behind that ship forever, and it never would have hit her. All this technology, you still can't plant a tracking device on someone without throwing it manually. Really strikes me as you just wanted the droid to do something so you can sell it as merch. And the whole Sabine getting a haircut thing, well, I mean, how stereotypical do you want to be? If stereotypes are such a bad thing, why do you keep doing them? And all of this is for what? Thrawn? A guy which you haven't built up in this series at all, and we're all supposed to be scared of him or care? No, this just seems like Mandalorian with more annoying characters. And although I do like that you've added far more lightsabers and blasters and that kind of stuff, it just, th there's nothing to hold it together. And so for that reason, I don't think you're going to keep people going throughout the entire series because you haven't given them a reason to keep tuning in. Like, yeah, there's lightsaber fights, but they could look those up anywhere. You've got to give them a reason to want to get through the rest of the episode to get to them, and you just don't. It's like a meal that's just gravy. It's like, okay, I like gravy, but it's supposed to enhance the food, and there isn't any food here, and I feel like I'm starving. So you're really going to have to step up your game in the rest of the series, uh, otherwise, this show is really going to end up nowhere and forgotten in an instant. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Now, bye bye.